Mr. Lawrence, Mr. Robert Nagolo, and Mr. Stephen Luboyera, our esteemed guests from Uganda. Reverend Brother Shahjan Anthony, our principal, Reverend Brother Jacob, primary in charge, Miss Albania, Miss Marianne, Miss Anoman, our academic coordinators, principals, teachers, and students of Montfortune institutions, principal and teachers of various sister concerns, and students of Little Flower High School. Good morning to one and all. It's my honor to welcome you all to the first virtual model United Nations conference hosted by our school. Model United Nations is an educational stimulation and academic activity in which students can learn about international relations and the working of the United Nations organization. It teaches participants to research enhance developing skills, teamwork, and acquire leadership abilities. Little Flower High School has been allotted three countries, namely Uganda, Indonesia, and Lebanon, to enact as a role model, keeping in view that these countries have been less exposed to many students. Our students will be presenting geographical, historical, socio-economic and political aspects of these countries. I request all the participants to watch the proceedings of the conference very carefully and jot down points about these three countries. We will be conducting a quiz at the end of the conference. Participants will get a chance to win attractive prizes in the form of Amazon gift vouchers. An MUN conference is incomplete without guests from different countries participating in the conference and sharing their views with us. Our special guests today are from the country of Uganda. Mr. Lawrence is a university student. He is very happy to be part of the conference and would like to share a few aspects of his country with us. Mr. Robert Nagolo is the Assistant Superintendent of Police in charge of Kanyana Police Station, Kampala. He is a very young, friendly and approachable police officer. His hobbies are nature conservation. May I request you sirs to share your impressions about your country. My name is Lawrence from Uganda. I'm here to present to you some of the few things you may not know about Uganda, the Pearl of Africa. It's one of the most beautiful and peaceful countries in Africa, which has welcomed a big number of refugees that are still dependent on it, still welcomes more from different parts of the world. Uganda has its capital as Kampala and it's a growing country. It's a landlocked country bordered by Tanzania in the south, Kenya in the east, South Sudan in the north, and Diara Congo in the west. Uganda is one of the most beautiful countries that one would wish to visit. These are the few reasons why you would love to visit Uganda. Let me talk about our culture. We love people. First things. First people. We love all nationalities. We are a democratic country and our best political leader, His Excellency Yoweri Kagutam Seveni, has helped us in the development of infrastructure and few other things as you have known during his regime. Uganda has its cultural leaders. Maybe I can talk of a few like the Kabaka and other kings in different regions who are so important in the country and we love them also, respect them 
although all are under the president one of our best foods that we love most is matoke it is so delicious and so enticing to taste for one to visit uganda he or she has to visit the matoke garden or a matoke restaurant apart from that for our special visitors we have fried grasshoppers which are so tasty so so tasty and when you visit uganda without having a taste of those two no you have not visited uganda at least take a sample and try it with other people dear viewers good afternoon my name is the assistant superintendent of police um, manning one of the stations in Kampala, Uganda, Africa. We have a lot to share with you about Uganda. I would like to tell you some few things about Uganda, the background. Uganda is a landlocked country. Uh, we are demarcated more by land. We don't have rivers and lakes that can take us to oceans. Can we, we don't have border. We are not bordered by water. That's why we are called the landlocked country. Uh, Uganda have a lot of sceneries. We have some few lakes and rivers. We have some swamps. We have the vegetation of Uganda and the green pasture of Uganda where there are forests, there are some green things, vegetables which we share and we have that makes the beauty of Uganda. We have wild animals, we have national game parks, we have mountains, have very beautiful sceneries. As I shared with you yesterday, you saw some gorillas, you saw the elephants. I shared with you, with one of you, yesterday. In Uganda, our president is His Excellency Yoweri Kaputa Museven recently has just been elected into power again for the first time. Uh, Ugandan history, uh, our people, most, the majority we are black, though we have some other intruders that came in who are whites and others half caste. So in Uganda we love people, uh, we, we love very many. And that's why we have all colors, but in the majority we are very black and very hostable. We can welcome whoever comes to Uganda. We can share the little we have with our visitors. So you are most welcome to Uganda. You can come and tour our country. Our country has a lot of food. The environment is very conducive for food. We have a lot of food. We have peanuts, uh, we have rice, we have sweet potatoes, we have matoki. We have uh, a, lo a lot. If you come, you will see what by yourselves a lot of things to share in Uganda here. And even when you see some, you may not like to go back. That's why we have very many investors. Others are local, others are international. When they come to Uganda, they don't want to go back to their mother countries because of the uh, hospitality and and and, and the, 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 the condition of environment that is in Uganda. You may not like to go back to your country. Uh, dear viewers, uh, I would like you to share this video. 
among us too. And next time you come also to Uganda and see what is on the ground. See the sceneries, see the rivers. The, I think we have the longest, the longest river it is in Uganda, which is the River Nile, stretching right from Uganda to Egypt. So you come and see everything that you are learning on history. Uh, you just come and view them physically, where there is a source of river Nile, where the Nile starts up to Egypt. You can come and view it. We have the longest mountains, a very beautiful forest. So, and even people, we are very dark, very dark, come and view us. Uh, you are most welcome. Thank you. Share that video. Thank you very much. Thank you, sirs, for your valuable inputs about your country. Thank you, Robert, sir, for extending invitation to all of us to visit your country. Thank you once again. Now, we shall begin with the proceedings of the Model United Nations Conference. Now, I request Master Adwik to take over the session. Thank you. I welcome all of you to the Model United Nations. Now, I request the President of the General Assembly to shut the line on the United Nations organization. Good morning. As the President of the General Assembly, it gives me immense pleasure to introduce this international forum to the delegates gathered here in this August gathering. The United Nations is an international organization founded in 1945 after the Second World War. The United Nations membership has extended from 51 member states in 1945 to the current 193 member states with two observers. The United Nations is committed to maintaining international peace and security, upholding human rights, respecting international law, promoting social progress, achieving international cooperation, and being a center for harmonizing the actions of nations. It is the world's largest, most familiar, most representative, and most powerful international organization. Unlike the League of Nations, the United Nations organization has succeeded in keeping the world distant from another world war. This is the biggest achievement of the United Nations. A number of agencies and individuals associated with the United Nations have been awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in recognition for their outstanding efforts. Coming to the structure of the United Nations, it has six principal organs originally. The General Assembly, the Secretariat, the Security Council, the Economic and Social Council, the Trusteeship Council, and the International Court of Justice. The Trusteeship Council is now defunct. It ceased to function in the year 1994. The United Nations has been playing a greater role in the upliftment of the social, economic, and educational standards of the world through special agencies like the UNESCO, UNICEF, WHO, ILO, and so on. The United Nations is also playing a pivotal role in the control of COVID-19. The COVID-19 pandemic is more than a health crisis. It is an economic crisis, a humanitarian crisis, a security crisis, and a human rights crisis. This crisis has highlighted severe fragilities and inequalities within and among nations. Coming out of this crisis will require a whole of society, whole of nations, and whole of the world approach driven by compassion and solidarity. The United Nations has launched the United Nations Comprehensive Response to COVID-19 to save lives, protect societies, Recover better, deliver a global response that leaves no one behind, reduce our vulnerability to future pandemics, overcome the severe inequalities exposed by the pandemic, resilience to future shocks, and above all, climate change. As a part of the response, the United Nations is issuing policy briefs to provide ideas to governments on how to address the consequences of this pandemic. The United Nations is the last hope of the existing world 
since it provides a forum at which all the nations can assemble, business strategies, and iron out their differences for the common good of mankind. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Now, I call upon the first chapter. Good morning. I would like to throw light on Model United Nations or MUN. Model United Nations is an academic simulation of the United Nations. The students play the role of the delegates from different countries and attempt to solve real world issues with the policies and perspectives assigned for their country. By participating in MUN, your knowledge of the world will increase them and yes, as you represent a country and in chat with other countries. The process involves substantial research, public speaking, debating, writing skills. Students learn drafting resolutions, delivering speeches, resolving conflicts, and so on. In addition, MUN provides the first entry into international affairs and introduces students to a wide range of peace, security, human rights, and rule of law issues that are on the United Nations agenda. Modern United Nations is a perfect opportunity for students to get involved, get passionate, and understand the world around us, especially during this pandemic time. It urges students to focus on healthcare and extend support to the working technology culture. The language used in the session is English and the dress code is formal attire. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. I request the second chairperson to speak about the procedure of the modern United Nations. Good morning. I would like to present the ground rules of modern United Nations. The opening of the debate. A. Roll call. Each session will begin with verifying the court. All the countries in alphabetical order state whether present or present in voting. B. Setting the agenda in motion. In order to put the topic area on the agenda, the motion requires to be attended. Delegates can propose the topic of their concern. The countries in order are Indonesia, Lebanon, Uganda, Pakistan, India, Code D. Ivory and Indonesia. C. Drafting the resolution. The delegates required to discuss the agenda with the delegates of other countries and arrive at a resolution. Model United Nations etiquette. Make your presence known to the chair. Warmly introduce yourself to other delegates. Interact with your fellow delegates. Present yourself as a really approachable person, willing to discuss other people's ideas and compromise on them. Be confident and polite. Be diplomatic and willing to compromise. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Chairperson. Now, begin with the voting. Indonesia? Present and voting. Lebanon? Present and voting. Uganda? Present and voting. There are 15 delegates here. Five delegates representing one bandit. Are there any points in motion on the floor at this time? None, Mr. Speaker. Saying none, the first order of this for complete act to be on the main speaker, please. Is there any motion on speaker's time? Yes, Mr. Speaker. Indonesia proposes that for the motion, speaker's time be 10 minutes. Thank you, delegate. Those who wish to be on the speaker's list, please raise your hands now. Are there any motions from Indonesia? Yes, Mr. Speaker. The delegates from Indonesia, Lebanon, and Uganda wish to raise their concerns for their countries in motion. The motion is not delegates from Indonesia. As you were the first to propose the motion, you are now to speak. Lebanon and Uganda recognize Indonesia speaking time for 10 minutes. Indonesia, you can now have to Salamat Pagi, respected Madam President, Honorable Chairpersons, and the respected UN delegates. I deem it an honor to represent my country, Indonesia, today in the MUN. So welcome to Indonesia. Indonesia is the world's largest island country located in Southeast Asia and Oceania between the Indian and Pacific Oceans. The flag of Indonesia is a horizontal bicolor of red and white, where the color red stands for courage and blood and the color white stands for purity. The national emblem of Indonesia is the Garuda Pankasila, 
a mythical bird from the country's historical epics. The eagle stands for creative energy. Indonesia has a lot to offer, from its stupendous tourist spots to its mouth-watering delicacy. It is my pleasure to make you all familiar with my land's geography and demography. Geography of Indonesia Indonesia has a total of 19,4569 square kilometer, where approximately 18 lakh square kilometer is land and 93,000 square kilometer is water. Our nation is composed of some 17,500 islands of which more than 7,000 are uninhabited. Indonesia has many high mountains, tropical rainforests, jungles as well as many swampy mangroves. The archipelago adopted Islam between the 13th and 16th centuries and now is the largest religion in the country with a Muslim population of 86.7%. Respected Madam President, as we all are aware that due to Indonesia's geographical location, we face a constant threat from floods, tsunamis, volcanoes and other natural disasters. And so we seek aid from the UN in terms of finances and technology. Demography of Indonesia Indonesia is the world's fourth most populous country with a population of 270.20 million and a population density of 151 per kilometer square, wherein the birth rate has slowed and the life expectancy has increased. Around 56% of the population lives on Java, which also happens to be the world's most populated island. Respected Madam President, the matter at hand is that for years now, our country has been importing basic food like rice because there is absence of enough fields to grow food for its 270 million people. And so we seek aid from the UN in this matter. Thank you. Madam President, as one of the world's largest countries, Indonesia is a home to a diverse range of climatic conditions. Unfortunately, the country is also vulnerable to threats posed by global warming and climate change. Taking a closer look at our country's climate, the main variable is neither temperature nor air pressure but rainfall. The average yearly rainfall here as a whole is approximately 200 centimeters. We experience a number of climates, mostly tropical rainforest followed by tropical monsoon and tropical savanna. Indonesia's natural resources. Indonesia has a large variety of mineral deposits. Mining, including extraction of oil and natural gas, accounts for roughly one-tenth of the country's GDP. Our country is one of the world's largest producers of tin deposits which are found on the islands of Bangka and Sinkim. We are a major supplier of commodities such as coffee, rubber, timber, palm oil and cocoa to the world market. This mining sector has been one of the key sectors contributing towards our country's economic growth over many decades. But on the other hand, it also has quite a few effects on our environment. Deforestation has been increasing and abandoned mining pits are being left. Pollution is all around and a lot of problems are being caused. Madam President, we appeal for your help as we need eco-friendly equipment, machines for reusing wastes, rehabilitating mining sites, helping farmers with better equipment and a few such effective ways to maintain a healthy environment in our country. Thank you. Salamat Pagi, Madam President. Honorable Speaker and respected UN delegates. Today, I am here to tell you about the history and culture of Indonesia. History of Indonesia. In 1602, the Dutch established the Dutch East India Company, the VOC, and took over Europe by 1610. Due to bankruptcy, the VOC was formally dissolved in 1800 and was brought to the Dutch East Indies under government control. Two days after the surrender of Japan in August 1945, Nationalist leader Sukarno declared independence and became the president. As a consequence, the Indonesian economy had to recover from the hardships of the Japanese occupation, the war for independence and the 1930s depression. In, during the period 1958 to 1965, there was a little economic growth. The growth rates dwindled largely due to the political instability. After all these challenges, today Indonesia stands before you as one of the handful of successful emerging economies that some refer to as newly industrialized countries. Although many Indonesians have to transit from day-to-day -day work in the informal economy where they typically earn the equivalent of several dollars per day. Culture of Indonesia Indonesia's national motto, Vineka Tunga Ika, unity in diversity, refers to the variety in the country's internal composition but also indicates that, despite all differences in its diversity society, there is a true sense of unity or Indonesianness among the people of Indonesia. The traditional music of Central and East Java and, the ba and Bali is the gamelan. The krongong is a musical genre 
that is the guitars and the ukulele as the main musical instruments. The Wiyang Show or the Shadow Puppet Theatre displays several mythological legends. Borobudur, located on the island of Java, a masterpiece of 9th century Buddhist architecture, is one of the most famous Buddhist temples which was revived in 1815. Madam President, we ask you for some funds for the preservance of the historical monuments when deterioration or unexpected natural disasters occur. Reconstruction of historic structures based on 3D laser scanner using delivered point clouds can be accurately done. Thank you. Madam President, our country Indonesia is the largest in Southeast Asia and is one of the emerging market economies of the world. We have the 15th largest economy in the world. Madam President, when we move to the export and agriculture of our country, Indonesia earns about $249 billion through exporting crude oil and natural gas. Our export partners are namely China, Malaysia, the United States, India and Singapore. The food crops here are namely rice, cassava, soybeans and peanuts. Indonesia's currency is Indonesian rupiah, where 1 rupiah equals to 0 0.0051 Indian peso. Madam President, we would like to bring it to your notice that in 2012, Indonesia's market has seen a real fall and it was chaotic. Then, slowly increasing the labor force and industries, we sustained our economy. Indonesia is a market economy in which the state-owned enterprises or SOEs and large private business groups play a very significant role. Indonesia, though a country with a slightly upper middle income, faced a lot of troubles during COVID-19. The economy of our country was decreased by 4% during this pandemic. Madam President, Indonesia is seeking economic help from the UN. We need health funds, medical equipment and some money distribution to the needy. We are facing trouble repaying the countries that have helped us. So we make an appeal to the UN to provide us with high medical funds, some increase of health sectors and health campaigns. Thank you. Madam President, our country, Indonesia, is a republic with presidential system. It follows the bicameral legislature. Since its independence in 1945, Indonesia has shifted through a number of political systems and governmental structures, reforming and revamping its executive, legislative, and judicial branches. Its latest period is known as the Reform Era. Some of the changes include delegation of power and authority to various regional entities while remaining a unitary state, the president may serve a maximum of two consecutive five-year terms, establishing a direct popular elections. Madam President, as you are aware, our country is often referred to as the democratic success story of Southeast Asia and a model of Muslim democracy. But yet, there are some issues our country should work on, like rising concerns about human rights violation, concerns about religious intolerance, widespread economic inequalities, gender inequalities, rising corruption, environmental issues, etc. Madam President, the main issue of concern for us is poverty. Still, people are deprived of basic amenities like safe drinking water and sanitation. Our government is, is working on revamping many protectionist policies and improving social assistance programs which may actually help in reducing the poverty. Madam President, I want to bring to your notice that our country is the fourth largest populous country with a developing economy. So it builds a high pressure on us to bridge the gap between haves and have-nots. So on behalf of our country, I make an appeal to the UN to help us with financial and technical support to build proper infrastructure, to provide policy recommendations, to give medical and health support to, to help the deprived sections so that we can meet sustainable development goals. Thank you. Thank you, delegates from Indonesia. Delegates from Lebanon, you can now take the floor. Sava al khair Madam President, Honorable Chairpersons, Mr. Speaker and respected delegates. A country popularly called as God's own country on earth, as people say that Siddhas were planted by God's own hands. A country that has the greatest fragment of ancient Rome outside Rome. Welcome to Lebanon. Lebanon is a country located in Western Asia, one of the smallest countries on Asian mainland. In total, the country has a surface area of 10,452 square kilometers, located on the eastern shore of the Mediterranean Sea, bounded to its north and east by Syria, and to its south by Israel. It consists a narrow strip of territory and is one of the smallest states with Beirut as its capital. It has rugged mountainous terrain, and the geography of Lebanon is extremely complex and varied landforms, climate, 
soils and vegetation undergo some sharp and striking changes within short distances. It offers paradoxes that are complex to understand. Demographics in Lebanon is very sensitive and one of the most salient features of Lebanon is the uneven distribution of population. No official census has ever been conducted since 1932 due to raging political imbalance. Approximately 1.8 million Lebanese people migrated to different parts of the world. Armed conflicts have ravaged the country. Madam President, Lebanon has one of the highest migration in the Arab region. Now, the current concern is that Lebanon skewed aging population. The absence of official data and comprehensive statistics is an impediment for any development policy. Therefore, Lebanon stands very low in Human Development Index. Madam President, I appeal to the member nations for implementation of development policies and a few other social resources to address this need and to stabilize our country. Thank you. Lebanon has a Mediterranean climate with four main seasons. We have long, semi-hot, dry summers and cold, rainy and snowy winters. Topographical variation creates local modifications of the basic climatic pattern. Bitterly cold winds often come from southern Europe. Madam President, in the recent years, we have strengthened our efforts in oil and natural gas within our territory. Lebanon is known as the green and white jewel on the shores of the Mediterranean Sea. The green is derived from the subtropical climate along the Mediterranean Sea, <coughs> while the white from the whitish landscape as a result of limestone that covers most of the nation's landscape. The government is however hopeful that recently discovered hydrocarbon resources will turn the economy around and improve the lives of our population. However, experts have warned us against excitement on the discovery as the part of production can at times take several years. Thank you. Many empires have left their mark in Lebanon, including the Egyptians, Assyrians, the Romans and the Crusaders. Despite being the second of the smallest countries in the Middle East, Lebanon debatably has one of the most diverse cultures. It is a multi-ethnic, multilingual and a multi-religious country. The Lebanese have diversity in their religion. Sunnis, Shias and Christians form the majority. Arabic is the national language of Lebanon, while French and English are also spoken because of a history of French colonialism. Kiba is the national dish of Lebanon. Madam President, the history of Lebanon starts with the rule of Ottoman as a part of Greater Syria. Sykes-Picot Agreement was introduced and Lebanon was formed. After the French, the British started ruling with Al-Bashar Khari as the first president. As slowly and gradually, poverty and illiteracy spread all across the country, Kameh Shaman came into the picture. His days are known to be the most wealthiest. But due to religious tensions and USA and USSR conquest for dominance, it led to a civil war in 1958, causing a lot of deaths. It ended with the Nasser Agreement with Arabic pan-leader Eisenhower for a new president. Madam President, these were the days of oppression and administration. And then the 15-year-long civil war started and it ended with the Taif Agreement in 1989 and Rafiq Hariri as the new president. He bought land in the capital and also changed the demographics of the country. After his assassination, Lebanon went through a war. Its rivalry with Americans also resulted in a mini-civil war which ended with the Doha Agreement. It was sought to bring back the peace and sovereignty of our country but unfortunately the agreement failed to serve its purpose. Madam President, the consequences of the Beirut explosions are severe. Due to the long years of civil war, many artists have left the country and three UNESCO World Heritage Sites are also damaged. Madam President, we appeal for your help as our cultural sector is in crisis. Thank you. Madam President, I am here to speak about the political aspects and about the government of Lebanon. Lebanon is a parliamentary democratic republic within the framework of confessionalism. The president has to be a Maronite Christian, the prime minister a Sunni Muslim and the speaker a Shia Muslim. This method is used to avoid sectarian conflict. Each religious community has a lotted number of seats in the parliament. The constitution of Lebanon was adopted on 23rd May 1926. It grants the people the right to change the government. 
it states that all citizens of Lebanon are equal before the law and are equally bound by public duties without any distinction. The last amendment in the constitution was related to the Taif Accord and was made in October 1989. Lebanese constitution guarantees that the judiciary is founded as an independent entity subject only to the law. According to the constitution, direct elections must be held for the parliament every four years. But after the parliamentary election in 2009, another election wasn't held until 2018 due to war in Syria. The last presidential election was in 2016. The current president, Michel Aoun, belongs to FPM party and the current speaker, Nebi Berry, belongs to Amal Movement party. Madam President, currently Lebanon has an unstable government. I appeal to you to look into the political crisis of Lebanon. In December 2020, Lebanon's outgoing Prime Minister Dia and three former ministers were charged with negligence over the Beirut port explosion and had to resign. It is pushed further in chaos as the recent Prime Minister Saad Hariri failed to form a government and resigned. After nine months of waiting, Lebanon has neither government nor accountability. Despite Parliament passing laws in favour of the people, Lebanese women face discrimination even today. Most of the Lebanese are denied the basic rights such as education, electricity, food and so on. Madam President, people have lost their hope and are utterly desperate. There is no indicator for the formation of a new government anytime soon. I urge the intervention of international bureaucracy to prioritize reform in our country. Thank you. Lebanon is battling with a deep economic crisis for the past 18 months. Lebanon's crisis is the worst depression of modern history. The currency has lost more than 90% of its value and more than half of the population has been propelled into poverty. Double blow of the pandemic and huge explosion in Beirut port made the Lebanon's economic crisis from bad to worse situation. What went wrong with the economy? Madam President, in order to understand this, we should peep into the economy of Lebanon from 1950 and how it gradually deteriorated. The period of 1950s to 60s was considered as Lebanon's golden age and earned the name of Switzerland of the East. The onset of civil war in 1975 saw a downturn in economic activity. It is the religious diversity that makes the country an easy target for interference by external powers. The civil war triggered in 1975 was a sectarian war lasted for 15 years and resulted in immeasurable destruction. Following Lebanon's civil war, successive Lebanese governments borrowed heavily from local banks for rebuilding the nation. The vision of rebuilding nation was derailed by corruption and mismanagement. The government borrowed new money to pay existing creditors, by which Lebanon's debt burden increased. The explosion on August 4, 2020 destroyed the port of Peru and affected countries' imports. The blast turned a grim situation to dire crisis. Today, Lebanon does not have a national strategy for sustainable development, nor a national economic plan, nor a poverty reduction strategy. The crisis in Lebanon did not crop up overnight. The mistakes were repeated for years together. The conditions in the country can be normalized only with the help of other countries in the world along with coordination and cooperation of the different religious communities in Lebanon. Madam President, we request for an international and independent investigation into the blast. Thank you.
Karibu Jamoria Uganda Our motto is for God and my country The coat of arms is a symbol of our identity The shields and spears represent the willingness of Ugandan people to defend their country The Republic of Uganda also known as the Pearl of Africa carries a huge timeline that has its roots since the beginning of human kind itself Evidence from the Paleolithic era shows humans have inhabited Uganda for at least 50,000 years. Uganda gained independence from the British on 9th October 1962. After a military coup on 25th January 1971, the dictator Idi Amin seized the control of the country. After Amin's rule ended, General Yoweri Museveni, the leader of National Resistance Movement, took over the reins of government. in 1996 and since then president museveni has helped revitalize the country providing political stability a growing economy and an improved infrastructure he instituted a number of capitalist reform and supported a free press let's take a glance at uganda's geography and natural beauty uganda a landlocked country located in eastern africa is bordered by south sudan to the north Kenya to the east, Tanzania and Rwanda to the south, and Democratic Republic of Congo to the west. The capital city Kampala is built around seven hills, not far from the shores of Lake Victoria. Lake Victoria. The geography of our country is very diverse, consisting of volcanic hills, mountains, valleys, and lakes. Murchison Falls, also known as Kaba Lega Falls, is a waterfall between Lake Kyoga and Lake Albert on Victoria Nile in Uganda. Uganda is endowed with many natural resources in the form of forests, minerals, lakes, and fertile soil. Thank you, Madam President. Uganda faces three major three major environmental problems, namely deforestation, land degradation, and water pollution. In the late 1980s about 7% of Uganda's dry land area was protected forest reserves. Forest and woodland cover in Uganda stands at 24% of the total land area. 30% of these areas are national parks, protected forest reserves and national and wildlife reserves. The most important forest products are timber, charcoal, wood pulp and paper. Madam President, Uganda has an abundance of forests. With many forests comes a lot of wildlife. Uganda has a large population of golden monkeys, hippos and mountain gorillas. Sadly, many of these mountain gorillas were killed due to the Ebola virus. Luckily, the government realized this in time and built sanctuaries like the Bhindi Impenetrable National Park to conserve them. Over the years, Uganda's forest cover has dwindled to 3.5 million by 2005, which equates to losing 2/3 of its forests. At this rate our country is set to lose all its forested land by the year 2050. On the brink of a growing urbanization, we are losing a lot of forest land to deforestation which is being increasingly used for non-agriculture purposes and city expansion. This further led to soil degradation and water pollution. The National Environmental Management Authority or NEMA who shot in its recent report was that unless the situation is quickly reversed the consequences will be catastrophic madam president another substantial environmental problem that stems from deforestation is land degradation which leads to low productivity and declining food security poverty and land fragmentation has led to over exploitation of land with inadequate soil and water conservation practices madam president i make a sincere appeal to the member nations to provide us grants and support us with technology and an action plan to preserve biodiversity combat soil degradation and also curb movement of hazardous wastes in order to have a sustainable development thank you greetings madam president i would like to throw some light on the rich culture and heritage of our country a variety of festivals and rituals are celebrated throughout the year uganda's ethnic arts are prized by collectors all around the world uganda is world famous for wooden carving with scenes from uganda history and legend i am working at textile painting at the other popular crafts katogo posho and motoko are some of the local popular delicacies of our country they are at least 32 languages spoken in our country 
but English and Swahili are the official languages. Kadongo Kamu is the most listened and traditional music of our country. The famous Nankasa dance is performed on Kadongo Kamu. Tourism The main tourist attraction in our country is Uganda Equator. People all around the world visit here to have a unique experience of being able to stand between the northern and the southern hemispheres. Queen Elizabeth National Park, river rafting and golf safari are the other popular attractions of our country. Madam President, now we would like to present the economic status of our country. The main source of income in our country is agriculture. The soils and the climate are very favourable to agriculture. We mainly export oil, fish, tea, coffee, tobacco and cotton across the world. Our country's earnings from foreign trade were 22,455 million US dollars in the year 2020. Uganda is self-sufficient but faces several climatic issues. The currency used in our country is known as the Ugandan shillings. The economy grows at approximately 4% every year. Major growth in GDP is dependent on agriculture, contributing 71.9% and the rest is dependent on other sectors. The GDP per capita is 971.98 US dollars. The GDP in the year 2020 declined by approximately 3.1% during the pandemic. Most people are engaged in agriculture and allied activities. Very few people are employed in the formal sector and a vast majority of them are employed in the informal sector in urban areas. The poor infrastructure, illiteracy rate and increase in population have resulted in poor skilled labour. Our government has actively taken several measures to improve the infrastructure and literacy rate in our country. Thank you. Madam President, I am here to represent and speak about the system of education in our country. The system of education in our country consists of three levels. Seven years of elementary education, four years of lower secondary education and two years of upper secondary education. Children join school at the age of six. Elementary education is the only compulsory level. Our government provides free universal primary education to all Ugandan children in the age group of 6 to 13 years. Today, in the educational sector, we are faced with many challenges. It is heartbreaking to know that the number of school dropouts has been increasing alarmingly. Extreme poverty has forced the children to join the workforce at a very young age. There aren't enough facilities for children with disabilities to attend schools. In the recent years, the COVID pandemic has had a negative impact on education. We have taken strict measures by closing down schools during the pandemic. In fact, our country is ranked among the top 20 countries for the longest period of school closures. Online education has not been a successful and an effective option either, as many students don't have access to online education. I, as a representative of my government, appeal to all the members of the United Nations to provide us financial assistance so that we can develop the necessary infrastructure and ensure that every child has access to education. Thank you. Greetings, Madam President. I am going to present a report on the employment sector. The Ugandan youth constitute 78% of the country's population. Every year, about 400,000 young Ugandans come onto the job market against 52,000 available jobs in the formal sector, which means that enough jobs are not available for the youth. Youth unemployment is a major concern as they are not skillfully employed and take up informal jobs in order to support their families. Our government has encouraged self-employment, employed young youth with decent pay and has allocated sponsored slots in education, introduced entrepreneurship as a subject to develop skills and competencies in our youth. However, in spite of these measures, the situation doesn't seem to have changed much. Sadly, the COVID-19 pandemic has severely damaged our economy and it has affected the livelihoods of the people engaged in the informal sector. The country needs urgent injection of funds to boost the current economy and provide livelihood to everyone. So, Madam President, I appeal on behalf of my government to provide us assistance to revive our economy. Thank you. Thank you, delegates from Uganda. Delegates, are there any motions on the floor? 
Yes, motion is for the agenda, Mr. Speaker. Lebanon, you have been recognized. What points do you raise, delegate from Lebanon? Discuss COVID-19 and climate change. Ranger, delegate from Lebanon. Indonesia, to what point do you raise? COVID-19 and climate change. Ranger. Uganda, to what point do you raise? COVID-19 and climate change. Ranger. Lebanon, as you were the first to raise the agenda, two delegates from Lebanon will get five minutes on the road to speak on the agenda and to put it forward. Lebanon, you can now have the floor. In February 2020, first case of COVID-19 was identified in Lebanon. Thank you, delegates from Uganda. Now, I call upon the delegates from Pakistan to speak for two minutes on the agenda. Now, I call upon the delegate from India on the agenda for two minutes. I call on the delegate from Sur B. I believe to speak on the agenda for two minutes. Very happy morning to all the dignitaries who are present over here. I'm a delegate from Cote d'Ivory, and Cote d'Ivory is a West African country with beach resorts, rainforests, and a French colonial legacy. Our president is Sir Alassane Awatara. According to the survey of July 2018, the highest recorded temperature in our country is 45.7 degrees Celsius, and least temperature recorded was 4.7 degrees Celsius. The climate of Ivory Coast is generally warm and humid, ranging from equatorial in the southern coast to tropical in the middle and semi-arid in the far north. There are three seasons in our country. Warm and dry, that is, from November to March, hot and dry, from March to May, and hot and wet, from June to October. Hotter average temperatures, far more inconsistent rainfall, and rising sea levels are already being observed in our country. The Ivory Coast is largely market-based and depends heavily on the agricultural sector. By the survey of 2019, my country's population is 2.57 crores and almost 70% of the Ivorian people are engaged in some form of the agricultural activities. And we are very much blessed that our country has the highest number of farmers and we are honored to have them in our country. In my country, as per the records of years before COVID-19, the pollution levels were very high and pure A percentage was 10.53 percentage. But after the COVID-19 effect, my country's A was filtered and its A pollution dropped to a very low level. I am very depressed that my people have lost their lives and jobs during this pandemic. But I am sure our leaders will abide by constitution and stay by the side of poor citizens and compensate the families who lost their livelihood. Let's all stay together and pray for our Mother Earth to get rid of this deadly virus. Let us now glance a short video of my country.
be safe be smart be kind rightly said by dr tedros adhanom director general of world health organization honorable madam president speaker chairperson and my dear fellow delegates a very good morning with your permission i would like to express my views impact of covid 19 in indonesia human civilization probably is passing through the most critical juncture of this millennium being challenged by the emergence of a new corona virus disease covid 19 the impact of covid-19 in indonesia has now spanned across all sectors of life as it has worldwide it has put a half to harsh medical professionals has left the nation in a position of uncertainty the mass fear of covid-19 is termed as corona phobia has generated acute panic anxiety depression confusion frustration loneliness and caused universal social and psychological impact on indonesia in particular and on the entire mankind in general the government of our country has taken strict protective and precautionary measures such as wearing face mask social distancing caused by the covid-19 pandemic is devastating in our country 1.5 billion students that is 87% of enrolled learners eight are out of educational institutions worldwide the affect front line workers children and general public i conclude by saying that covid-19 has created social and psychological illnesses and worldwide crisis we as a global citizens should rise to the occasion to meet the challenge of third wave and adhere the protocol of covid-19 stay home stay safe wear mask and hygiene and social distancing thank you good morning to honorable president chairman and uh, and speaker and delegates who are present here today i would like to speak the climatic conditions of uganda Uganda has a warm tropical climate with temperature falling in the 25 to 90 29 degrees celsius. The the month from December to February are the hottest but even during the seasons the evening can be chilly with temperatures. Uganda receives a annual rainfall of 1000 mm to 1000 1500 mm. The rainy season are from March to May and from September to November. The capital of Uganda is Kampala. Uganda is an African country composed by the equator whose climate is migrated by altitude in fact much of the country is occupied by a plateau which has a altitude ranging from 1000 to 1500 meter here the climate is presently warm with average temperature ranging between 20 degrees and 25 degrees and annual falling ranging here are little however there is a warm period from December to March. Thank you. We are honored to have in our midst Mr. Steven Duborera, a doctor from Uganda working in UK. May I request you, sir, to share a few aspects about our country? Hello, my name is Steven Duborera. I'm one of the doctors in training doing general practice specialty in the UK. I am from Uganda. Nice to meet you. I'm happy to share with you about my country, Uganda. 
uh, feel free to listen in. Uganda is a landlocked country that forms part of East Africa. It got its independence in 1962 as it was a British protectorate and now it's a member of the Commonwealth. Its current president is Yoweri Kaguta Museven. Uganda has a total population of over 45 million people. It's a very welcoming country where people are free spirited. They welcome everyone. It's very lovely. Uganda is also the source of the Nile, which is known as the longest river in Africa. And it goes from Lake Victoria through Sudan, Egypt, up to the north of Africa. It is also a country that is known to have the equator, which divides the world into the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. Uganda has developed much of its sectors, education, uh, health, economy. When we talk about education, there are more of the good schools in urban areas. We have very big schools like the Aga Khan, Kampara Parents, our Victoria, where people go for education. There are also schools in the rural areas which uh, serve most of the underdeveloped regions and children use different means to reach these schools. The weather in Uganda is very tropical. We have a season of rain and a season of sunshine. There is no winter, there is no snow in Uganda. The economic activities in Uganda are many, but most of the people engage in farming. They grow both cash crops and food crops. Among the cash crops grown include vanilla, coffee, and cotton, as well as tea. Uganda is one of the leading countries in East Africa in export of coffee. Other activities include fishing, market vending, whereby people bring different foodstuffs and other items for home use in the market uh, where they are bought. Transport services is also booming. The commonest means of transport locally is the Boda Boda, which is a two-wheeled vehicle that can transport one to two people. But we also have taxis, we have a train, we have water transport where we have a ferry on Lake Victoria. We also have airline, which is uh, recently uh, started functioning. Among industries, Uganda is highly developing at a faster rate, and most of the industries include Mukwano, Madivani, among others. They manufacture most things, for example, uh, jerry cans, cups, books, clothes, to name but a few. Its tourism industry is also good. Uganda has got a vast quantity of wildlife to include elephants, zebras, giraffes, lions, chimpanzees, monkeys. Um, the wildlife center has its center in Entebbe, that's called Zoo, but there are also different national parks which include Windy Impenetrable National Park, Maction Falls, among others, and it attracts a lot of people from all over the world to visit the world life in Uganda. The health sector is 50-50, whereby there are not so many hospitals, but there has been a recent change in healthcare provision in Uganda, with many medical schools being opened up. Um, the doctor to patient ratio in Uganda is 1 to 24,000, meaning there is still a, an impact on healthcare, but also the hospitals are not many. 
the main hospital being Mulago National Referral Hospital, but we have other regional hospitals across the country. For example, Masaka Regional Referral Hospital, Alila Regional Referral Hospital, we have Lacho Hospital, we have Gulu Hospital. So all these and other private hospitals like Nakasero, Kampala Hospital, Case Medical Care, International Hospital, Kampala, all these provide healthcare services. In the rural areas, we have more of the health center settings. Uh, usually we have from health center to health center three and health center four. In health center two, you won't find a doctor. In health center three, you can find a clinical officer. And in health center four, it's more of a sub-district level with a medical doctor manning the egg hospital. Lots of immunizations happen mainly in health centers, but they also happen in hospital. So Uganda takes a key role in looking after the children. Food is... Thank you so for your valuable inputs about your country. Thank you everyone present here. With this, we come to the end of modern United Nations. We can now disperse. Thank you. I now hand over the mic to Asad. Brian Herbert said, and I quote, the capacity to learn is a gift, the ability to learn is a skill, and the willingness to learn is a choice. I appreciate each one of you for making a choice and being, with here, being here with us this morning. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all to the second segment of today's program, the Quiz Challenge. I hope you all had a great learning experience as you witnessed these young students simulate, engage, debate and resolve. It has been a constant endeavor to inculcate in you all a spirit of inquiry and a quest for knowledge. Dear children, you all are our hope for a brighter tomorrow, for you are the change makers for a better world. This brings me to the quiz segment. We have four registered teams with us. I extend an open invitation to any school who is willing to participate. I have on list with me Monfort School Kadapa. Monfort School Kadapa, children please wave. Monfort School Kadapa. Mon St. Monfort Pin School, Hyderabad. Monfort School Nalgonda. St. Monfort High School, Nalgonda. Alright, we begin this quiz with four participants. Each participating team will have a direct question. No past questions. The time limit for answering each question is six seconds. Every right answer will fetch you five marks. So all set children, please be ready to win exciting gift vouchers. Round number one. The first question goes to Monfort School, Kadapa. Please keep yourself unmuted. Which is the world's most populated island? Time up. We move to the next question. The answer was Java. Second question goes to St. Monfort, Pin School. Which country established its control in Indonesia? We move to Monfort School, Nalgonda. What is the motto of Indonesia? It's unity in diversity. For our God and for our country is motto of Uganda, I think. We move to the next question. The next team is St. Alphonsus High School, Nalgonda. The Dutch East Indies is now called as... The Dutch East Indies is currently named as Indonesia. Earlier it was called Dutch East Indies. We move to the second round. In the first round, none of the schools have opened their account. Let's see as we move to the second round. What kind of legislature does Indonesia follow? Monfort School, Kadapa. Next question goes to St. Monfort, Pin School. What is the latest period of Indonesia known as? We move to Monfort School, Nalgunda. Which sea is to the west of Lebanon? 
St. Alphonsus High School, Nalgonda. Which tree in Lebanon is the national symbol and pride of Lebanon? It is the Sedar tree. This brings us to the uh, culmination of second round. At the end of round two, we have the scores with us here. Team one, Monfort School, Karappa, has five marks. Team two is yet to open its account. Team three, Monfort School, Dalgonda, five points. And the rest two teams are yet to open the account. Since both the teams are at five, we have a tie-breaking tie-breaker question. Let's uh, you have to unmute and keep yourself ready. How many countries border Lebanon? We have Monfort School Karappa leading with 10 points and Monfort School Dalgonda gets the second place with 5 points. So this brings me to the conclusion of a short quiz which was actually just to motivate you all to read my dear children. The quest for knowledge must continue. You must read and enhance your knowledge. Thank you very much for your participation. Just a small announcement. We would like to give an opportunity to the participants from PIN School to kindly share their views on the agenda in motion. PIN School, kindly come forward. You can take the scene. Good morning to you all. I am Shaisa Parvani, studying 8th standard at Senman Patkini School, Chadar Now I am going to share with you a few thoughts about the of the kingdom of Cambodia. All Cambodia is small country here. We need to this is a country now for which it is site like and and for the temple. The climate of the country is tropical and hot all year. As every country wanted to in increase increase their GDP. Cambodia too wanted to increase increase their GDP so the country increase in increase their money and agriculture to produce made the first in the traditional way the country begin to cut the price of their forest for forest forest and for the converted into permanent land to meet the target. In beginning in in beginning it helped them in in abundance but as the national resources reduced reduce the country begin to face the ground ground of their art the increase to eat cost various health issues among the people. The sudden flood, growth and insects outbreak, despite and despite the threats and the mass damage their leaf livelihood, livelihood, the increased number of wildfire first First, a damage to their ecosystem and the declining water supply from the national rivers and reduce, reduce agriculture yield for a focus, focus the country to realize the great mistake done, done to their ecosystem. And now they were they reworking with UNDP to repair the mistake what they have done done and implementing various plans to stop the sudden flooding and growth situation in the country and working with other countries. Seriously, stop the climate climate change. Thank, thank to one and all for this opportunity. Wear mask and you are sanitizer. You sanitizer to avoid COVID. Thank you. Thank you, delegates from Pin School for sharing your views. If you're not willing to learn, no one can help you. If you're determined to learn, no one can stop you. 
Creating a number of learning opportunities for one and all is Reverend Brother Shajan Anthony, our principal, who believes that learning must go on. Reverend Brother has been instrumental in, in, in initiating several online competitions and events so that continuous learnings take place, which is a very much prerequisite for this modern world. May I now invite Reverend Brother Shajan Anthony, our principal, to address this August gathering. So good afternoon to all the participants. The outset, uh, I wish to congratulate uh, all the organizers uh, and the partic uh, participants uh, team and especially I would like to thank the participant teams from St. Alphonse, Snellgondon, Penn School, uh, Hyderabad and Montfort School, Kadapa and um, Montfort School, uh, Nalgonda being a participant members of this uh, model united assembly i congratulate madam president congratulate the chairperson congratulate the speakers congratulate the delegates of uh, indonesia uganda and uh, lebanon i think uh, during this uh, model assembly we have uh, come to know about uh, your country your uh, political scenario and socio-economic scenario and especially the activities that you have been uh, dealt with the COVID uh, uh, COVID related uh, activities and I congratulate the, all the organizers especially the IT team Without any interruption, uh, you are able to focus on to the different uh, the, uh, different teams and uh, uh, making this uh, uh, model assembly very vibrant and also very uh, innovative. Also, I congratulate the staff in charge who have been. Uh, uh, associated with the children for preparing for all the all these days uh, and I also congratulate all the delegates uh, for your perseverance and patience patient during this uh, critical time you took chance and made this uh, model assembly as a, one of the innovative one so congratulate everybody and also especially the president and the speaker for organizing this uh, entire uh, motion of uh, United Assembly in a very systematic way. Also, I thank um, our chairman for giving us uh, this opportunity. And uh, the, although we have started uh, um, uh, from a little flower uh, uh, degree college uh, from this year, uh, we, I, we schools have taken up and uh, giving us this opportunity, this platform, and uh, we hope uh, this platform will uh, give us an opportunity and uh, more and more uh, delegates and this uh, one of the these delegates we hope uh, they will uh, enter in uh, seat in the uh, they'll make sure that to enter the united assembly and uh, fight for our country thank you just me that uh, i also wish to congratulate uh, montfort uh, school kadapa uh, for uh, winning the quiz competition. This was an uh, instant uh, competition that uh, left uh, for this. Uh, also wish the uh, uh, runners up for Montfort uh, School uh, Nalgonda. So we appreciate uh, your uh, uh, enthusiasm and uh, participate in this quiz. Uh, and uh, also all other uh, members of uh, different uh, schools who have been participating in this uh, quiz. Also, I congratulate uh, Asra Madam who, who initiated the uh, quiz along with uh, his team of members. Thank you. Thank you, brother, for providing us this rich platform and newer opportunities to explore possibilities. On this note, I invite Mustafa Ahmad, school pupil leader, to propose the vote of thanks. Education is not the filling of pain, but the lighting of fire. Good afternoon to you all. It is my proud privilege to propose a vote of thanks on this very special occasion. 
I'd like to thank God Almighty for keeping us healthy and safe and bringing us all together as one big Monfosian family. I would like to express my deep sense of gratitude to Reverend Brother Shajan Anthony, our principal, for providing this enriching learning experience. Thank you, brother, for your constant motivation and guidance. A big thank you to Reverend Brother Jacob, our primary in charge, for all the support and encouragement. I thank Albania ma'am, Anaman ma'am and Marianne ma'am, our academic coordinators, for their valuable suggestions and coordination. I express my gratitude to all the honourable guest speakers for their valuable messages. I place on record my sincere gratitude to all the principals, teachers and students for their wholehearted participation and cooperation. A big thank you to all the student representatives for their wonderful simulation of the United Nations Conference. I thank KZR teacher, event coordinator and all the teachers for their untiring efforts in making this event a grand success. I thank the technical team for their seamless coverage of today's program. Thank you all once again. Thank you for taking out your time and sharing your valuable thoughts with us. Society.